This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by the HP Media Smart Server powered by Microsoft Windows Home Server. Virgin America, this is how to fly people, the official airline for Revision 3 at CES. And GoDaddy.com. I'm Patrick Norton, welcome to Techzilla. Veronica and I have just returned from Las Vegas after attending the Consumer Electronics Show. We are tired out, and we had so much good stuff from CES, we couldn't fit it all into the live shows. So without further ado, here's one more Techzilla from CES 2009. The man, the myth, the legend, our favorite resource for cell phone reviews. He knows his stuff. Sasha Sagan, PC Magazine, joins us. Actually, PCMag.com, we should say. Yeah, we're the PC Mag digital network now. 100% digital. All bits. But it's all the same reviews. It's the same quality. And you still have like nine. You've reviewed every cell phone on the planet, it feels like. I've done more than 425 cell phone reviews by now. So basically, if you want to know what's going on in cell phone and cell phone technology, this is the man to go to. Should we talk about anything else or should we just start with Palm? Is Palm back? Are they going to survive? Did they actually, does Palm no longer suck, I think is what people are asking. Palm is the big story of the show right. for me. And yes, the Palm Pre, or more specifically, the web OS, the software on the Pre, is the biggest thing since the first iPhone and cell phones. It does stuff that genuinely nobody else does and it does it beautifully. You were talking about synergy, which is a word that always makes me cringe when I hear it applied with technology. What's that, what's that actually going on? In about? this case, it's something called contact synergy, okay. and it is a great idea, and it's totally new here. It's taking all of your contacts, all of your people from all around the web, everybody you know on Facebook, on Twitter, in Outlook, putting them all together into one address book, reconciling them, and letting you contact them by however is the right way to contact them. It makes it a people-centric situation. So I want to talk to Bob, it automatically sends it to Facebook. I want to talk to my boss, it automatically sends an email. If I want to talk to my wife, it automatically calls. Bingo. You start, you start text messaging me, I sit down at my computer, pow, that conversation becomes an IM conversation. Same window, same thread. That's really smart. Now how about the hardware? Is it up there with the operating system? You don't seem as excited about the new hardware. The hardware is okay. I consider the hardware a neutral. The hardware okay. isn't going to sync it. Is it the sexiest hardware out there? No. There's a lot of decent hardware out there, but the software, as soon as you turn it on, it's wow. So what else has been exciting? You know, anything from like, you know, Nokia, Sony Ericsson, I mean, who, who's the other doing, who else is doing something exciting in cell phones at this well, show? Well, all those other big guys are really waiting for, there's two cell phone shows coming in the next three months. Okay. And I've been told by Nokia, Sony Ericsson, Motorola, whoever, that at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, which is mid-February, and CTIA Wireless here in Las Vegas in April, that's when those big announcements are coming. But I have seen two other trends here that have really thrilled me. First of all, there's an amazing amount of movement around mobile TV. There's four different competing mobile TV systems I was going to say, it's, it's, it's almost like there's more activity on competing standards than there mm -hmm. actually is on any useful products for the consumer. Absolutely. A lot of these products aren't going to break until later this year, but there's two different satellite TV systems just announced at this show. Satellite TV to cell phones. Satellite TV to your car. Okay. Okay. That's so, a little more reasonable. Exactly. Satellite TV to your car. But the one that really excites me is something called ATSCMH, or Mobile DTV. This is uh, TV to cell phones broadcast by all of your local stations. Really? Yes. It's broadcast in band in their existing channels. They can use whatever of their content they want. Your local CBS, NBC, ABC affiliate can now broadcast a special cell phone channel. That sounds like something that would be huge in Japan but not as successful in the States. But you're really excited about it. We'll see. I'm excited about it. I love TV. <laughs> I have this vision of you in the subway once it comes out of the tunnel actually getting a chance to look at stuff. Is there anything else? Any accessories? Any batteries? Or is that pretty much everybody waiting for the Mobile Congress in Barcelona? There's actually a couple of small companies out there that are doing some fun stuff. And I really like, there's a tiny company called Logic Wireless. Mm -hmm. And they have a phone called the Bolt which has a built-in projector. Really? Yes. It can project a movie onto a screen in front of it. 
And the story or of this- Or you just hang up a napkin on the plane. Yep. The story of this company is as fun as their phone. They are, they're literally all college kids. Nobody in this company is over 24. They're financing it off credit cards and their parents' money. They are, this is the American dream. They're a bunch of young kids with a dream and a technology and they want to make it happen. Are they actually going to ship product? Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds cool. like they're going to be able to make a couple of thousand, hopefully sell them to aficionados, and use that to springboard to the next great projector phone. I assume it's a GSM phone then? There's a GSM phone, absolutely. Anything else exciting at the show? There's a, there's a lot of Bluetooth going on. Um, love, everybody talks about how you know, the superior Bluetooth, the last Bluetooth accessory you ever need to buy, and they all still sound like compressed Bluetooth audio. Is it time to like step up so we have a decent wireless connection to a cell phone? Well, there's there's sort of two prongs there. Number one, voice. There's a lot of good work being done on noise cancellation. Uh, Motorola just put out their Crystal Talk Plus. It's the next level of their noise cancellation. You can bet Aleph, the Jawbone people, are working on it. Right. Everybody, noise cancellation is pushing forward every six months. However, Bluetooth stereo is stuck in the dark ages. Listening to music wirelessly, it is dead. It sounds like crap. There's no yeah. fix in sight. That's unfortunate. Any other things that are exciting at the show? Anything else we need to know? Well, keep an eye on my coverage and my reviews at PCMag.com. I'm going to start reviewing the stuff that came out at this show within the next few weeks. And uh, yeah, that's about it. We'll have links on the website. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank Sasha for coming out. Great stuff as always. Always good to see you. Thanks, man. We're here at the creative booth at CES 2009 taking a look at the Boda HD. It's this little guy right here. It has eight gigabytes of storage and also one touch upload to YouTube, photo bucket, and box, which is really nice if you're taking fun videos and you want to just get them up there online as fast as possible. It's also, uh, it records in 720p and outputs to 1080i, which is pretty nice. And they also include an HDMI cable right with this, so just plug it in and go. And uh, it's going to be two hours of battery life, roughly, which isn't fantastic, but it's pretty decent. And it's going to be $299, and it's available right now from creative.com. This is the 3M M Pro 110. It's a portable projector that you can hook up to your phone or any other device that output, outputs video. And uh, you can see here it's got VGA, S-Video. It also does a uh, component in. And you just, you know, hook it up, point it at the area that you want to project your video onto. And it's got seven lumens of brightness and uh, it's VGA video. So, you know, not the highest resolution, but it's still pretty good for all intents and purposes. And this is their prototype device, the MM220. And now this will go into cell phones, so you don't even need this extra piece. You can just shoot your cell phone and have video that way. So this one's on store shelves right now. It's $359. It's got 640 by 480 resolution and seven lumens of brightness. And this little guy, hopefully, we'll be seeing sometime within the next year. I'm here at the LG booth at CES 2009 talking with Mark LaBelle from LG. And can you explain the LG watch phone a little bit to me? Yes, the watch phone is an unbelievable device. It is a lovely watch, but at the same time, it happens to have a phone built into it. The phone itself is very, very cool. It's not just your regular, typical phone. You can do text messaging on it. It has a built-in MP3 player built into it. It is uh, water resistant, so if it's raining, you don't really? have to, oh yeah, you don't have to worry about taking it off and throwing it in your purse, you're perfectly fine. But it has some amazing features on it. It is a full touchscreen device, so you literally just tap the screen to navigate through the phone. But my favorite feature on the watch, it actually has a two-way, uh, it has a camera, so you can do two-way video conferencing on the phone as well. On your watch? On your watch. All right, yeah. so is this, is this really usable? I mean, how easy is it going to be to go Dick Tracy style and, and talk on your watch phone? It's actually very easy to use. Uh, it has voice activated dialing, so you can literally hold the clear key and say call home and the phone will call your home for you. You could talk on it like Dick Tracy or you could use Bluetooth on it. One of the reasons we have Bluetooth on it because the phone also has a built-in MP3 player. Mm -hmm. So you can listen to your music through your Bluetooth headphones as well. That makes a lot more sense yes. to have a headset on your ear and mm -hmm. then just be able to dial and do the voice activated activation stuff from the watch. Exactly. But the, the speakerphone on it's very loud. It's very nice. You don't have to put the phone up to your ear to use it. it you could actually, it's an arm length, so you can keep it an arm away. So if you're driving, you could hold on to the steering wheel, turn on the speakerphone, oh. and you could just talk away. Or you could just turn on the camera and make people think you're drunk as you're driving. It's well, yeah, I can see wheel. I can see a whole right. new trend. You know, when people wear the tiny, tiny Bluetooth earpieces exactly. and you think yep. they're talking to themselves, now right. people are going to look crazy talking to their wrists. Exactly. But it's an amazing device. When is it going to be available, and do you have any idea? idea of the pricing, anything like that? No idea on pricing. The hardware hasn't been finalized yet. Okay. However, it will be launching second half of this year in Europe. We'd like to take the time now to thank one of our sponsors, Virgin America, the official airline of Texel Alive at CES. 
Flying can be a frustrating experience. Traffic jams, long lines, and unpleasant flights. Well, no more. Virgin America is all about making the experience of flying fun, exhilarating, and relaxing. Something that you look forward to, not dread. With in-flight amenities like movies, music, TV, seat-to-seat -seat chat, games, and by mid-2009 Wi-Fi across the entire fleet, everything is at your fingertips. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Plus, they have high-quality food available for purchase with the RED system. And to add to that feeling, you can join them on their community site, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So if you want an airline experience that's fun and exciting, then book your next flight at www.virginamerica.com. We're here at Digital Experience at CES 2009, and I'm over at the Griffin booth taking a look at IFM, which is going to be their free iPhone app that's coming out in March. And so all you need to do, click the iPhone app right there, and then you can choose your city and then pick a radio station. We'll do KQED and it'll pull down all the metadata for the song or the track that's playing at that time. And now the best part is, is that if you have a device like the Griffin Navigator here, once you select your station, it'll automatically change your car's radio station to that particular one that you want to listen to. And this is the Navigator, as I mentioned, it's $50 and it's available right now. We're here at the Genie booth at Digital Experience at CES 2009, taking a look at the Genie, which is a mobile social networking device, an MSND. And uh, the really cool thing about it is that it's running Android. So this is one of the first devices that we've seen that's, you know, it's not a phone. It's actually a mobile internet device. And so as you can see here, just like the G1, you can pull out the, net, the uh, menus from here. Currently, this device is Wi-Fi only. You will not be able to access the internet over eVDO or any kind of cellular network. And they're going to be working with a solid state drive in the future. This is just a prototype, but they're expecting to ship in Q3 of this year. And it's going to be less than the iPod Touch. It's going to be probably around 149 So definitely a good deal if you want to check all your mobile social networks on the go. We're here at CES 2009 talking with Michael from Schwinn and taking a look at the Schwinn Tailwind. And now this is a electric bicycle. It is an electric battery bicycle. Battery-powered yes. bicycle. And I got a chance to ride this a little bit at Showstoppers What'd the other What did you think night. about it? It was really fun. I have to say, I was a little bit wobbly at first. It took a little bit getting used to, but once I got the hang of it and I got the boost going. And when you felt the boost, was it amazing? It was pretty kick-ass. <laughs> so tell me about the bike. How does it work? Uh, the way the bike works, it's a pedal assist bike. So you have to be pedaling. When you're pedaling, you can turn the power on, and there's three power settings. And then you feel the power kick in and it assists you as you go. And once you stop, once you start coasting, it, it turns off the battery, Exactly. Right? If you ever stop pedaling or even brake at all, mm -hmm. it'll disengage the battery and you're just back to regular bike. And if I remember correctly, it is an eight-speed bike. Yes, internal eight-speed bike. So with some bikes, you have to be pedaling at all times to switch the gears. With this bike, you can just crank it while you're oh. not pedaling. So if you're sitting at a light, you're in a high gear, you stop, you want to start off in a lower gear, you just put it the gear you want instantly. Now, I live in San Francisco and I... That's one of the things that's kind of kept me from riding a bike around the city too much is because I just can't get up those freaking hills. <laughs> but you have the power the power mode here and if you if I took that up to 3 would I be able to get up those like 45 degree hills or you know at least 30 degree hills? Definitely. It would definitely give you the boost. Um, you can select the power you want. So on a flat surface you may want just a little bit of power. Okay. But get up those hills, you crank it up to the, that highest uh, setting and then you partner it with whatever gearing you want to do and it'll push right up. We have uh, speeds going uphill, probably somewhere between 14 and 16 miles an hour, and then uh, on flats, uh, probably closer to 17 miles an Trust hour. Trust me, that's a lot faster than <laughs> I can go on a regular bike. And this model has been around for a while, or at least I've seen similar designs to this. What's new in this version this year? Schwinn has had three uh, years of electric bikes. This is the first year of the Tailwind, and this has the Toshiba SCIB battery technology in it. Okay. And what that does, it allows the battery to charge with a full charge with under 30 minutes of charge. Wow, so that's not very long at all. This is compared to three to four hours of all the other e-bikes on the market. And so how long is the battery going to last you? The battery will last you about 20 to 25 miles. Oh, that's not so bad. I no. mean, uh, forever. Like, how many oh, recharges will you get out of the, the battery? The charge cycles, yeah. Industry standard is about 500 to 1,000. Warrantied, this battery's warrantied for 2,000 charge cycles. We've tested it as high as 6,000 charge oh cycles. So this will last you for a good long time. It, it will. What's the pricing and availability? $3,200 for the price, and it is currently available at any authorized Schwinn dealer in the U.S. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. And you guys got to check out my hilarious footage of me trying to figure out how to ride this thing. It didn't take too long, though. Thank you so much. Thank you.
right, you know we love defragmenting, especially the Windows machines. Disk Keeper 2009 is the latest version of my favorite professional tool. One of the interesting things is they're bringing their enterprise features into the consumer model. Home version sells for a mere $29. One of the interesting things about moving the professional features or the enterprise features down is support for terabyte hard drives and visit tasking and making sure there's never any real time, basically resource allocation conflicts. So it runs in the background and it runs happy. One of the things I really like though, real time defragmentation, which came out last year, which means it corrects files as Windows write, well, not as Windows writes them, but right after Windows writes them, because can't really tell Windows what to do. But Windows puts a file and fragments it, this will actually bring everything back together and smooth things out. If you've never defragmented your drive, especially on a Windows system, it can give you an incredible free performance boost. One more feature that I really like, they have a new tool called the SSD Optimizer. It's $25 on top of the home version, and it's actually targeting solid state drives. And what's really interesting is because of the way solid state drives work, they tend to do gnarly things to performance. As a matter of fact, a few months after you buy something, say a netbook or an SSD drive in your notebook, you could see some amazing performance degradation. I've seen it a little bit. These guys are saying it's pretty amazing, like a five to 15X performance decrease that you can take care of in a way that's not going to waste a lot of uh, well, writing cycles on your drive that could wear out. Really interesting stuff. Just keep for 2009. Looking forward to getting this in for testing. Sometimes we can't resist the shiny, and we found some really shiny stuff down in the South Hall of the Las Vegas Convention Center, like all the metal holding the bamboo in place on the Asus Bamboo Series 11 and 12 inch notebooks. We like the LED backlit screens, Core 2 Duo CPUs, and built in net cams, but we really want a bamboo trackpad. The Asus Foley notebook demos were fascinating even behind glass. Pure Fold takes a single flat piece of plastic, mounts a screen at one end, a motherboard and keyboard at the other, then origamis it into a standard shaped notebook. While the Unfold demo features coffee stains to emphasize that its cover would be made from a recyclable paper, a notebook for public use that could constantly change. I've got a thing for HDTV mounts. Premier Mount's WTFM 3765 stood out as the lowest profile HDTV mount I've ever seen. 0.37 inches deep, capable of holding up to 100 pounds of monitor from 37 to 65 inches with a slick spring-loaded bracket to tie your screen to the mount. Geffen always has something interesting at CES. This year it was a trio of wireless HDMI boxes. The top of the line $1,000 wireless for HDMI extender uses ultra wideband and visually lossless HD compression to carry a 1080p 30 frame per second signal up to 30 feet. And while Geffen doesn't recommend it, it has worked through walls. If you demand uncompressed video and need to cover 100 feet, the Geffen TV wireless for HDMI will send 1080p 24 frame per second or 1080i 60 frame per second video over a 5 gigahertz frequency along with your Dolby 5.1 or stereo audio channels. The $899 box has one major caveat, it's line of sight only. Finally, the Geffen TV Wireless HD Extender offers the ability to carry 8-channel LPCM audio along with a 24Hz 1080p video signal up to 60 feet. You can take this one home for a mere $600. It's time to thank one of the sponsors of today's episode of Techzilla, GoDaddy.com. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. Starting at less than $5 a month, web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to the GoDaddy hosting connection. It's the place to quickly install over 50 free applications like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, OS Commerce, and more. GoDaddy.com makes it easy to customize your own virtual dedicated server. Choose one of three popular plans or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. You want to score a discount? Of course you do. Enter code TECH1, that's T-E-K-1 when you check out, you'll score an additional 10% off your entire order. Some restrictions do apply, please see the site for details and do us a favor here at Techzilla. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com and use that code T-E-K-1 when you do. We're here at CES 2009 with our go-to HDTV guy, Robert Heron from DLTV. Hey, hello. Welcome to the show. Are you Thank having you. fun? I'm having fun. And today, today is just yet, what is it, day four, day five of the oh, show? Oh, I know. You I can't know. even keep track at this point. But anyway, I wanted to ask you, what are some of your favorite TVs that you've seen so far at the show this year? Well, without a doubt, one of the big items this year is just decreasing cabinet depth, mm -hmm. making them as thin as possible, literally, to pretty much hang them on a wall and getting to the point. Panasonic has a brand new plasma that they're going to sell this year that would be about an inch thick. That's a dramatic reduction for plasma technology. That's incredible. It's like putting up a picture frame on the wall. Exactly. But I think even more impressive was that in their booth, they have a prototype of what's coming up either next year or the year after, a third of an inch thick. 
And perhaps even more surprising to me was that they're claiming they're going to be able to achieve Energy Star 3 ratings, which I never thought a plasma would hit that because the LCD guys have a pretty easy time hitting those targets for good energy efficiency. Plasma, on the other hand, has always been kind of handicapped in that sense, and if they can achieve that, that in and of itself is a really good technical advance. And for TVs this year, what are some of the trends that you're seeing in terms of the tech that is going into them? Integrating more broadband content and also just making that internet connected device do more. Uh, Yahoo Widgets is a big deal this year. I've heard They're, a lot about the widget integration, yeah. It offers a platform that's fairly unrestrictive, and that's the one thing I've talked to all the manufacturers and they're saying, look, if we're going to add these features to our TV, we don't want to be locked into any one. We want to be able to mix and match and do what we want. And the people providing that type of uh, those programs and content for those sets seem to be going along with that. And says, you know what, we're not going to restrict you. If you want to use our content in addition to others and license it together into one set, go for it. But, you know, in addition to the widget style stuff, I'm hoping we'll see stuff like Netflix and Pandora built right into the TV, in addition to other, other content too from various other companies that are all getting involved. What's up with this gesture-based stuff from Toshiba? That is the closest thing I've seen to the quote-unquote, oh, what was the movie uh, I'm thinking of? Oh, a a Minority Report? Minority Report style control <laughs> of a display. I never thought, you know, that's a movie. That's kind of fantasy. They have a system that comes very, very close to achieving that in reality now. They can essentially put an infrared camera on top of a TV, and it shines bright light at you. Infrared, of course, you don't see it. And using your hands, you can control, in this case, they're demonstrating a photo album which is just phenomenal. So there's a grid of photos and literally using the, the cursor on the screen, using only your hands, you can move the album left or right, similar to the effect you get on an iPod or an iPhone, where you can just kind of slide your finger across and scroll oh, through items. Oh man, that's so cool. And then it even brings up a nice globe view where it's like all the photos in a globe, spin the globe, grab your photo, stretch it out. Oh, so it's got even like multi-touch type It's, it's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough to where you're going, okay, that even though it's a tech demo, you can see that coming so in So it's just a too. prototype, it's not something that's coming out this year. Totally. Other than the widgets and broadband integration on the TVs, are there any other technical advances you've seen this year? Picture detail improvements. Even if you have a 1080p screen, it's not necessarily displaying full 1080 resolution with any material, regardless of what it is. It's just the, the processing behind the scenes. On the LCD side, they're doing something called 240 hertz technology. Now, there's a couple of weirdness it bits to the whole deal. One, there's only two companies doing true 240 hertz refresh rates. That's Samsung and Sony. Everyone else is taking their 120 hertz panel and utilizing a scanning backlight technology that syncs to the refresh rate. It provides better detail than the 120 hertz, but until we get it in the lab, we want to see how well it compares to the true 240 hertz stuff. And in the case of the plasma panels, the latest generation, especially if you head over to the Panasonic booth, they're showing off how even their previous gen, they were getting about 900 lines of resolution out of a 1080p signal. The latest gen is doing the full 1080, and it's just, it, you see it. It's fantastic. It is. So other than Blu-ray, how are people getting HD content onto their TVs this year? There's lots of streaming technologies now that, you know, it is not going to achieve the same level of quality, picture quality, that you get with the Blu-ray material, but it's simply a matter of bandwidth and encoding. But there's a lot of now, you can, a lot of content you can send directly to the TV itself through services like, we mentioned Netflix, they offer some HD content. HD light, yes. Yeah, you're but not loving the quality of that, are you? You said it was kind of like DVD. The, for smaller size screens, it's perfect. Okay. And, and you know what, for the convenience factor, it, it, it's a compelling thing to have, and it's very convenient there. But you also have you know, boxes like the little Voodoo Box that downloads, it's better compression, better picture quality, and it looks great on a 65 inch screen, although the pricing is a little more expensive than your all you can eat. Uh, Netflix style multimedia content. Excellent. Well, Robert, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. And if you see anything way cool, you have to let us know so we can go check it out on the show floor. All the major manufacturers have the most amazing new sets for 2009. And Fantastic. I, cannot wait. I got money burning a hole in my pocket. Schlage is not something you think about web pages with. They're a lock company, right? Well, actually, their new link system is pretty amazing. You're looking at the ability to unlock a lock from anywhere you have internet access, whether it's a computer or a cell phone. It's a pretty cool concept, and it's actually pretty affordable for the first time. This is the Schlage base station. For $299, you get a base station that's using Z-Wave, encrypted Z-Wave networking, to work with locks in your house. So you get a base station and a lock, and for $12.99 a month, you'll actually be able to access this, see if the house is locked, unlock the kids if they lose their keys, Additional locks are $199. It's a really interesting idea, really affordable, and it looks really, really easy to set up. Slag's name we trust. We just wish it wasn't $12.99 a month to get the service, but you know what? It's a pretty cool idea. We're glad to see it out here. 
Hey everyone, we're here at the NBC Universal booth and I am talking with Josh Topolsky, the editor-in-chief of Engadget.com. Thank you very much for being at our fine always, blogger lounge. Always a pleasure. I love joining you. I know it's not as sweet as your double-wide trailer you guys have out in the parking lot. That is sweet. <laughs> Although it's starting to smell a little bit, you know, after four days, five days. I have been in your war rooms before yeah. and I know that scent very you can well. Get it. It's the scent, I'll tell you where it's the scent of uh, pure work. And also uh, sweating people, usually, yes. and food. So now, I've been asking a lot of people over the course of CES what their favorite products are, but I thought you would be a good guy to come to, because I know you so well, <laughs> to ask what products you didn't like, or what experiences really kind of let you down this year? Yeah, well, <clears throat> there have been a few. Uh, one of the ones that kind of stands out to me is, is uh, the slot radio, slot which is radio. a SanDisk thing. Mm -hmm. what it, it's essentially, it's an MP3 player, but you only have um, a thousand songs that they choose, hit songs. It's like, now that's what I call music, but a thousand songs, you can't take them off, you can't swap them out. It's just, that's it, you buy it, you've got those thousand songs, that's it. And then you have to buy another one in a year, I guess. You can't even that, take, you can't they, take them off the No, you'll off. buy the slot radio, it's slot radio uh, three or whatever. So like unless you like two. like top 40 hit music type yeah, stuff, to you're going to be really let down. <clears throat> well, much. yeah, and you actually can't do anything with the product. You know, even if you really like that stuff, eventually you'll get <laughs> bored of it. So you're just stuck in it. All right, well, other than that monstrosity, what else gave you a hard time? Uh, the Well, Sony has this Walkman here. It's this OLED touchscreen Walkman. That sounds cool. Yeah, we had a leak of it, and then we actually saw it. We saw it was revealed, you know, here at CES. And we've been dying to get hands-on with it. You know, we, the main thing we like to do is get something, play around with it, show the interface. The hands-on. It's in a glass jar, some kind of like heavy glass case, and they won't take it out. And we've asked like ten times, and they keep promising. They say, "Oh, you come by at six o'clock, we'll take it out of the case." They will not take it out. So our theory is, it's just a shell. There's nothing, there's nothing inside, inside of it. or there's like a bunch of pennies. <laughs> it's like it's like a but filled with rocks. Wow. You know. Well, thanks so much for coming up on the stage here today and telling us about the things that kind of let you down a little bit this year. I'm glad I could uh, luckily, assist. Luckily, there was some good stuff to kind of balance it off, yep. I would like to think. If you guys want to see their CES coverage, you can check it out at ces.engadget.com. This is, of course, Josh Topolsky. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Probably my favorite thing that I've seen here at Digital Experience this year, and uh, it's the NVIDIA GeForce 3D Vision. And this is Brian, he's going to tell us a little bit about how it works. So, they, I mean, they just look like regular old glasses, except a little yeah. bit high tech, a little yeah, bit on the high tech end. And it actually enables you to see video and video games in 3D. Yeah. How does it work? So, there's actually, inside the glasses, there's actually two what we call active shutter glasses. So, think of it as two mini LCDs going off and on really, really quickly to uh, give you this new dimension in gaming. And how many different games right now work with it? So it actually works with the off-the-shelf games. It doesn't actually require any special support. We actually do all the special sauce in our drivers. So we've tested about 350 of them. Um, and they you know, they range from any, any of the new ones to you know, stuff that's two, three years old. And what kind of hardware can you use? I mean, do you have to have really high-end hardware and a really great monitor? Well, you actually, you actually do need a couple of things. One is uh, you actually need a new monitor that supports 120 hertz displays, okay. right? That's critical because with 120 hertz, we're able to drive the resolution and the refresh rate up to give you a great gaming experience, um, just on, you know as a baseline. Right. Um, on top of that, you also need a graphics card from NVIDIA, so GeForce 8800 or above okay. will work fine. And then you just need the glasses and then your favorite game. And when are these going to be available? Uh, Thursday, January the 8th, I guess, so tomorrow. So depending on when you're watching this, you may already be able to purchase these. Hopefully. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian. You're welcome. Thanks. Let's take a moment to thank one of the sponsors that helps us bring this show to you, the HP Media Smart Server, powered by Microsoft Windows Home Server. The HP Media Smart Server will automatically back up multiple computers in your home, including both Windows PCs using Microsoft Windows Home Server, as well as Macs using Apple's Time Machine. Easily and automatically centralize all your digital media files, including photos, videos, music, and any other important files. It's a convenient way to manage your iTunes libraries and associated playlists, and a streamlined way to manage your photo libraries, and easily publish your photos to popular photo sharing or social media sites using any internet-connected computer. It's your new entertainment hub. It gives you access to your digital media anywhere you have an internet connection. 
easily extend your digital media experiences by conveniently streaming photos, music, and videos within your home to other PCs and your TVs through gaming consoles such as the Xbox 360. Do us a favor here at Techzilla and check out HP's Media Smart Server powered by Microsoft Windows Home Server. We're here at Showstoppers at CES 2009 taking a look at Pogo Plug by Cloud Engines. And this little device right here will enable you to access all of your files from home anywhere. All you need to do is attach your, your external hard drive right here via USB and then connect it over the Ethernet. And then you just go on their web interface and download your files. You don't have to. You know, you don't have to sign up for some kind of web service. You don't have to do anything fancy like that. Your files are just always right where you want them as a drive on your computer. And you only need to register the device once, and then it will work. It just needs to attach an email address to the device, and you're good to go. And now the best thing, too, is that if you want to share files with your parents or something like that, they don't have to sign up for anything either. They just get their files and go. And finally, for the truly mobile, they have a free iPhone app where you can view all of your files, and all the videos will be encoded for viewing and streaming on the iPhone. Now this device will be available in the beginning of March for $79 and they're taking pre-orders for it at pogoplug.com. We're here at the HP booth at CES 2009 taking a look at the HP Fiber desktop PC. And now this is a brand new one that they just announced today and it's a super gaming PC, but it's also very energy efficient. But my favorite part is that it is whisper quiet. You can barely even hear this thing when it's running compared to my gaming PC, which sounds like a jet engine taking off. All right, so let's get to some of the stats. Uh, for one, it's got a 350 watt power supply and it is energy saving. So what happens is that the hybrid SLI has an energy save mode. So when you just want to do some some photo editing or something that's not going to take up too much power, it'll run the onboard GPU and turn off the video cards. So you can save a lot of extra power that way. Um, it's got a Blu-ray player here, which is very nice for watching videos and that kind of thing. It's got Sound Blaster XFI card, so it's got very good audio quality, four gigabytes of RAM, and it's got an Intel 2.8 gig quad core running on this thing. Now it's going to be $17.99, it's available now, but for $300 extra, you do get that Blu-ray drive, and then if you flip open this, there we go. You get this clear side panel over here, and you also get this cool lighting effect so you can change yourself also. And it's got the uh, Sound Blaster card and the faster processor for that extra 300 as well. Very nice. Hey guys, we're back in the NBC Universal booth. We got a fun time here. Lamar Burton's here. I get first. I get before I get to all the serious mm. CES technology questions. Yes. My wife's got invested. Thank you for reading Rainbow. Uh, we got a toddler. She's getting so stoked to introduce him to the show. And your wife is a, a librarian, librarian who are some of my favorite people on the planet. Librarians and teachers. Uh, I just love. How do you? How's a nice man like you get involved with teaching people how to read? My mother was an English teacher. Really? And uh, you either read a book in Irma Jean's house or you got hit in the head with one. That was how she rolled. So I really didn't have much of a choice. But my mother always, in, in addition to reading to us when we were kids, my, I have two sisters, uh, one older and one younger. My mother to this day has two or three books going simultaneously. So I just grew up in a family where reading was like breathing. It's so awesome. Yeah. So, you know, what's going on with Reading Rainbow this year? Well, you know, uh, three years ago now, after 25 years, I called it quits on Reading Rainbow. Um, it, I think that, that the 25 years we did and all of the experiences we had and all of the people we met, um, such a, uh, a, a, an essentially wonderful part of my life, and it was time to move on. Right. So I'm creating now a, uh, a series of documentaries called The Science of Peace, and I really want to address uh, the Reading Rainbow audience, but a little older. In fact, I, I really am more interested in creating family programs. Because at this point, the kids from the early days probably had kids of their own in a lot of That's places. right. I mean, you know, for being on the air for 25 years, there's a whole generation of Reading Rainbow watchers who are beginning to have kids and, and showing the show to their children. So we did, like, you know, a couple of hundred shows, which will be on forever um, on PBS. So I understand there's a bit of a battle. You are actually trying to beat. I understand in a punitive and vicious way. Yes. Will Wheaton on Twitter.com. <laughs> I understand. That's, there's. A, I hear there's a nefarious goal. No, 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 no,
And you've been sucked into it, I hear. I love it. It's like, it's, it's electronic voyeurism in the best way. Because you know, in the sense that you're sort of eavesdropping on somebody's life, they're giving you permission, they're like inviting you in. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's I don't know, it's, it's addictive is what it is. It really is. I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time. I'm loving it. Do you blog at all? Or I, I'm, you know what? I, I, I'm really just, I, I'm 10 days new to this. Right. I don't think I'm a blogger. I don't know that I have the blogger spirit, but I do have a point of view. And so I'm, I'm just going to, you know, start a conversation. I've started a conversation. I'm just going to continue the conversation it's a good thing. Uh, with, the, with the people on Twitter. And, 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 and like take photos. And you have to do characters at a time. So yeah, it's so you have to really know what you want to say. Do that you push everything together and or, use the punctuation. Yeah, or you which use Irma Jean's Irma Jean, on the hip yeah, of the book. with another book. Exactly. You're excited. You've been watching. You've been around the Sony. You've been all over CES. You've seen more of CES than I have at this point. OLED over at the Sony booth has yes. excited. OLED is. I mean, it's it's less than a millimeter wide. Oh, less really? than a millimeter thick. I mean, that you, that's the, the that's a ballpoint that that is, you know, thinner than uh, the. The, the head of that pen. That's amazing. It's that thin. It, it, it's it's incredible, and they're putting that technology not just on television screens, but uh, on their new version of the Walkman that's coming out uh, this summer. It's pretty spectacular the, stuff. The gorgeous screens. Yeah. I mean, the colors the color, are saturated. Yeah. They're beautiful. Um, went to uh, Panasonic today. Saw their 3D uh, plasma technology. No goggles. No, no goggles no are required. You have to. Lenses. No, you have to. The, and, the, and the glasses look more like Ray Charles sunglasses. So okay. the so the the, the viewing know, technology is getting cooler. You know. Um, well, how did it feel? Because a lot of times, like you watch, a, you know, everybody's like, "We're changing the world of 3D, and it's going to revolutionize gaming." And you're like, "Oh my God, it's the same glasses that make my skull ache after a minute." You know, and there, there there's less of that. But you know, I've always found, in the older that I've I've, I've grown, uh -huh. the more my mechanism can't handle that kind of whatever it is, that sensory input. The flashy kind of like yeah, flickery stuff. Yeah, so I, I, I experienced less of it, but the technology itself is really, I mean, literally in your face. It's very cool. I got it, speaking of in your face, you must, everybody with glasses here must be like, what will you, will you take a picture for us, sir? <laughs> we take a picture with our glasses? Will you like we, to endorse our glasses? We, uh, we stopped by one of those booths uh, yesterday. Um, yeah, but you know. I've got, I've got the visor. I don't I, wear glasses, I, thank I, you. I've got the visor. I have, if, if I wanted to put on glasses, I could put on the visor at any time, day or night. And sometimes I do, in, uh, just by myself. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to talk My to pleasure. us. From all of us at Texilla, we really want to thank you guys for watching our coverage of CES 2009. For more videos, you can head over to ces.revision3.com. And if you want to send us a question at Texilla, you can do so at texilla at revision3.com.